Oh hi, are you here about the heater? I'll show you, it's outside, come and have a look. I've been around diesel heaters for at least the past 30 years because of my connection to engineering, boating, tiny houses, the gypsy house truck lifestyle. I've had loads of friends who've fitted diesel heaters to vehicles. Now in the early days they were made by two companies that were called um, Wabasto and Espachia. And Espachia were from Hungary established in the early 1900s by a guy who was a highly skilled tinsmith. He went on to develop the company into um, a refrigeration and heating business. Now, the Ipspachia diesel heaters have been around for the last 20 years or so, and it was all that was available for quite some time. They cost a fortune, and if they broke down, it cost another fortune to get them fixed. But about 10 years ago, the Chinese came along and made a direct copy of the earlier Espachia model, which was now 25 years old. And so out of patent protection. So these things have been made in China for the last 10 years or so, but we're up now to version four or version five, and all the bugs seem to have been ironed out. Today's problem for somebody who's buying one of these Chinese diesel heaters is that they come in eight or nine different specifications. The heater itself remains the same. It's what you get with the heater that changes the specification of the kit. You'll find that this heater, they're all essentially the same inside. They're extremely simple. You've got a fan that draws in ambient air. It pushes it through into a chamber and mixes it with diesel that's injected at a specific rate that comes in from the bottom. That's controlled by an ECU. This talks to the heat sensors and the fan and the diesel delivery pump and it uses what they call fuzzy logic to work out the best fan speed, the best pump speed, to give you the heat that you're asking for. They're an incredibly simple, really, really clever device, and they're all pretty much the same. You will find that the eight kilowatt is just a rebadged five kilowatt. I've no people who've measured them, they're not eight kilowatt at all. Don't believe the advertising. But these are a very capable five kilowatt unit. They do make a two kilowatt unit that's the same, but a fraction shorter. I believe what it is, is the combustion chamber. This part here is 50 millimeters, two inches shorter. Great if you haven't got the space. So as I say, they're very simple in operation. The brain in here, the ECU, is what controls it all. This is very clever. This has got all sorts of capabilities, but those capabilities are limited by the interface that comes with the kit. The very early kits, they had a rotary dial and an on-off button. They were really super duper simple. But as electronics became more commonplace and it all got easier, they introduced the first of the electronic controllers that allowed you wider parameters of control and monitoring over your Chinese diesel heater. Now, this particular model is known as the other display. You have this one, which is the rotary dial analog display. And then they moved on to the first of the digital displays. Now the one I'm holding in my hand here is known as the new controller. Before the new controller was the first controller, but it wasn't actually the first controller, it was just the first digital controller. Preceding all of them was this one, which was just known as the controller. After the one that I'm holding in my hand came the blue controller, and the blue controller could come with the silver remote or it could come with the red remote. You have to specify which you want. Now the blue controller, that comes in two types. There's the two button 
and there's the 4 button. But as you can see, the 4 button one doesn't always come in blue. But it's still called the blue remote. All of this happened over a period of about five years and it got very confusing. To make things even more confusing, all of these remotes are still available. But general rule of thumb is, the newer the controller, the more features it has and you'll, you'll like it, but they're, and they're very low cost. But the best news is, a nice man in Australia called Mr. Jones has built his own controller and that controller Bluetooths to your phone and he's written an app and it is comprehensive and you will love it. But it does cost almost as much as a new diesel heater itself, but they are available. I'll leave his link to his website down below in the description. Right, here's a bit of bonus information. Now, for those of you who want to have something that's truly portable, doesn't need to be screwed down to a surface, and you don't need to attach the fuel tank to anything, there is the portable version. Now, the portable version comes in its own carry case with handles on the top. It's a little heavy. You will still need to plumb the exhaust to the outside, and the exhaust does come out of the bottom. So it's not as portable as people might lead you to believe. Um, the other thing is the 2 litre, <coughs> and the other thing is the 2 kilowatt and the 5 kilowatt. Here's a picture of both of them sitting next to each other. The interior components are very, very similar. It's just that it's a fraction shorter and that makes it better for smaller installations that don't need as much heating and your storage space is maybe a little bit more cramped. Last on the lineup, here's a picture of the infamous 8 kilowatt heater which has been tested by people I know personally and I trust their method of testing. They've discovered that it is just a 5 kilowatt heater with a higher range cutout um, safety switch. They get frighteningly hot. I wouldn't recommend fitting one. They're a fire hazard. And while we're talking fire hazards, here's an advert for the heater that I'd feel a little uneasy about shopping with. As I just said, there are several models of these controllers. The blue controller and the red controller, they can come with two different types of remote. One remote is simply on and off. The other remote is on, off, and gives you the ability to go up and down through whatever menu you choose on the controller. So you can control the heat, the fan speed, and you can manually control the pump speed. You can pair more than one remote to each controller. Over the last two years, there's an Australian guy who I'm going to leave a link to in the description down below. This Australian guy has developed his own controller for the Chinese diesel heater. Looks relatively similar to this, but it has the ability to Bluetooth to your phone, then everything can be with you wherever you are. You can turn your heater on before you get home so that the place is toasty warm as you walk in the door. You can monitor your fuel use. You can look at the difference in temperature and the time that it takes to raise from ambient temperature to your desired temperature. They're $150, but if you want the extra features, it's a great place to go looking for them. So as I say, there are several kits available. I've counted eight or nine. It's the same basic heater, but it's the accessories that come with it that make the difference. Some have a five litre tank, some have an eight litre tank, some have four small outlets to divert the warm air to four different areas. Some have one big outlet. Some of the kits with the big outlet have a split have a splitter to allow you to take it off to two different places. But the universal items that you're going to find in your kit will of course be the heater itself. You're going to get either one or two pieces of ducting depending on whether or not you have the splitter and you're going to get the wiring loom that allows you to connect everything together. The wiring loom wires have a two meter length so that means your battery can be mounted two meters away from this and this wiring loom will do the job. It also means that your 
controller can be mounted two meters away from the device itself without having to lengthen the wires. Underneath these you'll see I've got the 10 litre wall mounted fuel tank that comes with its own mounting and plumbing kit. This mounting and plumbing kit you'll find inside the tank so if you open your package and you can't find this this is where you'll find it inside the tank. You will have to drill your own delivery hole in the bottom of the tank because this tank is a left hand or right hand mounting configuration. You can choose how it's mounted therefore you'll most likely want to choose where your outlet is. So there are two positions here and here. These are the two positions that you can put your outlet. Of course once you've got your tank set up you'll need a fairly decent length of hose to get that down to where you want to mount your heater. Somewhere you're going to interrupt that line and you're going to fit this. This is the metering pump. It's not a delivery pump, it's not a lift pump. It doesn't have an awful lot of power, it doesn't move an awful lot of liquid. But what it does do is gives an accurately metered dose for every stroke of the pump. The ECU talks to this and between them they sort out exactly how much diesel your heater is going to get. There's an inline fuel filter, you'll want to put that in before the pump. They do supply good quality fuel resistant rubber tubing and decent quality hose clamps with the kit. There's also a selection of self-tapping, self-drilling screws so that you can screw everything in the kit to the required positions to get the thing working in your installation. This strange looking rubber fixture here goes around the pump and that gives it a vibration free mounting. If you melt the pump solidly you will get a gentle duck 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 through the body of your vehicle. Here's the Wii remote. I've got the model that allows on off and up and down through the ranges. One thing I was a little disappointed with is that these clamps are only barely just big enough to fit over this hose which is such a shame because they hardly fit. By the time you've put this hose over where it's intended to fit these hose clamps won't do the job. These two clips are for holding the exhaust pipe and its muffler in whatever position you choose. When you're fitting the exhaust pipe you need as few bends as possible. This is the combustion air inlet pipe. The combustion and the ambient and the warm air are completely separated so there's no chance of any carbon monoxide poisoning or even the slightest smell of diesel or smoke. It's a good idea to leave the canister on the end of the induction pipe because that takes out the pulsing of the induction and reduces a little bit of the noise. It's also going to stop any fluff and cat fur getting up inside your machine. The exhaust and the inlet both enter and exit the machine from the bottom. The exhaust is the one closest to the hot end of the machine the combustion air inlet is the one closest to the fan. The diesel inlet is close to the combustion air inlet. Here's an underneath view of the integrated circuit unit, the ICU or the ECU depending on where you come from. We've got nice automotive quality waterproof plugs these have an o-ring in the bottom of each receptacle so that they can handle any splashes or flooding or rain that they'll be exposed to during the course of the average lifespan on a vehicle. If you're mounting one of these to a cabin or a home then conditions are going to be a lot less harsh. You can literally just use something like an upside down fish bin to house this thing and put it 
underneath the underneath the deck or just outside the door if you want just a temporary installation in fact these machines are also available in a fully portable cabinet which holds the fuel tank the power supply and the burner itself all in one handy box with a handle all you need to do is plumb the exhaust outside the price surprisingly is very very similar but I wouldn't buy one of those if I was planning on fitting it to a vehicle Now these things are incredibly fuel efficient. I've fitted them for other people and never really been able to play with them long term. In fact, I don't need heat at the moment. The main reason I bought this is because the price has become so incredibly low and I wanted something to play with. The first one of these I fitted was an Ibspartia and since then I've fitted a few other Ibspartias and Webastos and they've all been in the $1,500 to $2,500 price range because of the price varies because of the accessories that are ordered with it and the exchange rate at the time. These things started off at about $500 but they're now down to $200 New Zealand dollars. So I purchased this for $199 with all these accessories. It's d I don't actually need to purchase anything else to get this thing going apart from, apart from a supply of diesel fuel. Now if you check out the link up here you'll see that I've done a video on testing the fuel consumption of one of these straight out of the box no mucking about no modif modifications just get it out of the box plug and play in other videos on chinese diesel heaters you can see how i've attempted to run this diesel heater on alternative fuels not a good idea for the amount of money that you'll save running it on an alternative fuel like dirty waste engine oil automatic transmission fluid or used fish and chip cooking oil is a bit of a waste of time in my opinion. It's smoky, it's cantankerous, it's hard to start and the ECU in here is actually so clever that it knows that you're not running the correct fuel and it will shut this thing down if you don't mix the fuel to the correct viscosity to have it travel through the pipes and behave the same as diesel. Unfortunately when you do that the calorific content is lower and although you may get it to burn your heat output will be less unless you go to the expense of um, filtering preheating and mixing your oils you're better off sticking with the fuel it was designed for